Who's aware of UNDRIP? Okay, you need to, this is fairly important, especially concerning the relationship of the indigenous people and what a lot of indigenous people call as the newcomers or the, the general community. Uh, UNDRIP is the UN Declaration for the Rights of Indigenous People. Uh, it's probably the biggest con job that you could ever imagine. Now, I've been involved with UNDRIP, reading it, following uh, a lot of people like Ron Valand and others talking about it, reading it, and getting to know uh, what's happening. I was on the Chief's call about a week and a half ago, where on April 22nd, when the, the Parliament was supposed to ratify it. Now, it's already been accepted, uh, basically, in British Columbia, and you need to understand what it's really all about. The concept of the UN is to, is to give back the traditional territories of the indigenous people. Now, the UN's agenda 21 and 2030 is to be able to take all the lands back, take away property rights that the newcomers have had like if you own a farm, if you own a house, uh, or own a property, they want to be able to, through one way or another, take away your rights to those lands and push you into, uh, ru uh, from rural areas into city centers. Now that's been a plan for a long time, and believe me, uh, they've been working on this for many, many, many years. This is not a new thing, if you are aware of how the um, UN Agenda 21 and 2030 work. Now, uh, when I was on the call with the chiefs, one of the things I noticed is they were trying to liaison because of this ratification vote for the uh, UNDRIP they are not being liaison. They are not being told what's going on, which sort of shocked me. Outside of a few reserves who are plotting out the traditional territories, I thought there was a liaison relationship going on, but there is not. So what's happening is the government and their globalist buddies are creating a system which even the indigenous people are... They know the general drift, but they don't know the depth of its uh, of how deep this thing is going. So we've got traditional territories, and they're supposed to be given back. Well, let me tell you some of the other things that have been happening concerning UNDRIP. Even within my own ranks of the people that I deal with, there is something very interesting happening. The fear of losing their land is creating racism. People like myself, people like Wendy, people like Marcella, people who are of indigenous background are getting fallout from the general community concerning, oh, so you're going to get your land back. What about my land? I own land. I'm, what, am, I going to, am I going to be pa paying taxes to you? You have to think about what is really going on. It doesn't matter if it goes through UNDRIP. It doesn't matter if the government just takes your land through UN agendas, through whatever it is. Their agenda is to take your land. You will own nothing and be happy. So don't. Remember, there are people here that have the heart of community, that we're working together, that we're moving forward in a way that's outside of what's going on concerning uh, these horrible, tyrannical forces that are trying to take everything. It is evil. So, with UNDRIP, it's also 
something that will encourage racism against the indigenous people. It's a serious ploy, something that really hurts me, and I want to mention this as well. I've tried to connect with many different indigenous nations. A, a lot of people uh, in the Upper Fraser Valley, the chiefs, most of them know me. And through Fraser Health, they are pushing the vaccine way harder than you could ever imagine them in your own community. They have been inoculating or vaccinating children since January. We're talking about teens and youngsters, youngsters. It is the new, what I call the new genocide because the vaccine is the kiss of death. And if they can get rid of and genocide our indigenous people, there's not much pressure for them to take what they think is theirs. And this has been happening for hundreds of years. What's happening in our community, when we share things with you, it's because we've gone through this already. And because of colonial core thinking, and I'm going to explain what colonial core thinking is. Because of colonial core thinking that has been pushed even heavier in the indigenous community, through their health directors, they have brainwashed our people to the point that they won't even speak to me. They won't speak to people with rational forms of thinking. I have tried and they literally run away with their ears plugged going, no, 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 no. They don't want to hear it because the health directors that run the reserves for health become close friends. If you know anything about our culture, when we trust you, you know, we become indebted to you because it, it forms a family kind of relationship. They know this and they've used this to be able to inoculate our communities. That's heartbreaking. I want to talk to you a little bit about where this is going and what we should be doing. I want to talk to you what's happening with the banks. I'm very fortunate that I have people that are white hats and deep divers. If you know anything about that kind of relationship, I'm very fortunate to have people who are very savvy in the banking area. And I want to share this with you. There's something called OTC, which is over-the-counter trading that happens only at night for, for banks that are, uh, and banksters, which is more like Morgan Chase, but also Toronto Dominion, Bank of Montreal. All our banks are selling their shares after the market closes. When this kind of thing happens, it means that our country is being bankrupted. If anybody knows anything about how shares work in the regular markets, everything is in red, which means that a lot of businesses, good old David Stee, Toys R Us, all these businesses are being bankrupted. Our country is being bankrupted. And what do you do? What happens when a reset starts? You need something, and that is an economic collapse. Now, people even like Peter Schiff and people in the marketplace are saying, when it crashes, it will be much worse than what happened in 2008, much worse than what happened in, in 1929, and much worse than what happened in the 10-year depression of 1873. If you research some of these things, you'll know what happened. In the Bolshevik Revolution, I know it's a long time ago, but I'm gonna bring you a little bit of history. The banksters closed the border of the Ukraine and between six and eight million people were forced into starvation. If you look at India, look at Colombia, look at countries around the world, all of a sudden there is no internet service. They aren't getting words out. And what's happening, India is starving to death. Because of COVID and what's happening, people are dying 
they're saying, oh, COVID. It's not COVID, folks. If you check out the banking information of what's going on behind the seats, they're being crashed. So what advice would I have to you? See the, all these people around you? This is your new core. You need to relate with others to be able to, one, store foods that you can exist for six months at least, be together with other individuals. That's one of the reasons why you're here, is to start groups together where you can grow, where you can store food, and where you can gather in a community setting. Does, does everybody understand where I'm going? This is vitally important because I've been told by um, investment bankers that because our country is being crashed, because the banks are selling their shares, which is a huge, huge thing, it means we might have to maybe two months max left before we see a crash. And if you've ever looked at documentaries concerning the Ukraine, concerning what the banks have done in the past, Venezuela being a very good example, because Venezuela was one of the richest countries in the world. Argentina, they are now in desperate straits. So prepare. That's basically all I have to say, and the reason being is Our hearts are prepared, but now it, we need to connect with our little community, even if it's a core of six to eight or ten people. We're, I'm already working with an organization that is doing this professionally, and we are we are offering and connecting with groups. Sometimes there are only four, five, six families or homes. Uh, we're starting to grow. Growing is vital right now. If you've got like. Even myself, I got myself a small little uh, greenhouse and we're, we're seeding and we're growing because when a crash comes, people riot, people loot, and there's nothing. So get yourself food, you know, flour, yeast, corn, grinders, um, stores of meat, uh, start canning, but allow yourself to also have different forms of currency. Gold and silver might be great, but you can't wipe your ass with it, right? So get yourself things that are, are currency in a really bad situation. And in Venezuela and Argentina, they were using, you know, things like Mickey's of alcohol, uh, female hygiene products, matches, lighters, things that are able to be traded. It's a hard thing to talk about or think about but it's also one of the reasons why we have community and the people around us and uh, know the pressures against the indigenous communities because of UNDRIP is not the doing of the indigenous people you know I've had some hate speech against me because of it um, and it really hurts because like a friend of mine said some time ago, don't help them. Because if you teach them about the things that have happened in your genocide, they're going to want to kill you after it's all done. I know that sounds ridiculous, but historically those things have, have happened. But it's if my heart can be part of your heart, then we work together and get through this thing because we do have the experience and the understanding of what has happened to our people. And now it's happening in an epic proportions. The vaccination system has hit our communities really hard and they are dying. These people, our people are dying. Now you remember residential school, the 60s scoop. We often say, where were you white folks to help us? But if we work together as one, we can fight this thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, JD. Thank you. Well done. All right, we got about.